thankfully, of any video game type, uh, visual novels are the easiest to take breaks <laughs> with. Uh, just pause at any time. I'll look into it. Good thing you did. The trail is not only real, but they're known to be associated with the mob. Tell Thompson to be careful. I hired this new girl, Claire. Uh, problem is, she's, uh, not very competent at anything. Should I let her go? Give her a chance. Claire's fumbling of orders is responsible for some pretty scathing reviews. I'm thinking of testing out this uniform and canopy. Do you think people will trust me with more things? Uh, no. no. I've written a piece on Shentilar psychedelics, but in reviewing it, it's super preachy. I don't know if I should publish it. And that one big brain puzzle game with lasers and the axe you played a while back is getting a sequel. I don't know about an axe, but I know Talos Prince. Yeah, that's the one I was thinking of. Uh, I heard, I did hear about it having a sequel. I don't know. I don't know where they're going with it. Because Talos 1 felt like a very complete game. So I'm certainly wondering what they're going to do with it. Um, philosophically, I guess I should say. Because I felt like that was one of the things that made Talos Principle really good. Is, you know, other than, like, it had, I thought it had really good uh, puzzles. And the way it used... Um, you could use elements of the puzzles outside the puzzles themselves. You know, they had a lot of flexibility. And the sort of philosophical underpinnings that ran throughout it, I thought, was also very important and very fun to chew on and think about and talk about. But going into the real world, I think I'm pretty sure I saw a trailer maybe some time ago. I don't know. I. It's something that I am probably going to get and try out because I did love Talos Principle a lot. I'm willing to give it a chance, but I'm trying to stay as blind as possible because I like, I like to go in things blind. Definitely something I plan on picking up, though. You're right. That's not me. My readers expect unbiased reporting, and I'm letting a personal gripe get the best of me. I just want people to know, amid the fun stuff, there's some really dangerous shit they need to be aware of. Esteval spends this morning alone. As noon approaches, Kairos enters the lab. Where have you been? Kairos doesn't bother to drop his shoulder bag. I paid some old friends a visit. Esteval's expression turns quizzical. Let me explain. I think I have an alternative for Elamai. We're still working out the kinks, but this could be how we keep our progress with Ark. Okay. Basically, we'd be setting up an older version of the neural net to house Ark as they are, before we strip anything out. Why do I sense a catch coming? Harris looks sheepish. Well, that's just it. If I'm going to make this work, I need to commit to it. I have to leave for a time. Esteval's curiosity turns to concern. I can't have you leaving on a maybe, Kairos. Your work here takes priority. It'll mean nothing if Cordo gets his way. That network is Elamai's only chance. Esteval spreads her arms. This is Elamai's chance. Just a little longer and we'll have it. I'm thinking that is the whole reason they've been trying to work on this neural net is to upload or digitize LMI. We can't afford that risk. If Cordo enforces his decision, we lose everything. I'm giving us another option. By abandoning Ark? By abandoning me? I'm not abandoning anyone. I'm coming back. What? You think I can carry this on my own? <sighs> Val. 
His expression softens. I'm just the cable guy, remember? If anyone can do this, it's you. I barely make a difference here anymore, and you know it. Esteval shakes her head, her fists clench. Damn it, Kairos. I don't need a shining knight to fix this for me. I need a friend. A grim silence passes. I know it's going to be difficult, but I can't see it any other way. Hey, Ice. Welcome on by. I hope you've been having a good evening. Esteval stares at him in disbelief. He sets her jaw. Fine. Go. I guess I'm all alone in this after all. Oof. Um, I think we're getting maybe in the last couple arcs. So we are an artificial intelligence that's been built. And we've been basically slowly being spread out to the city to basically manage the city and everything. Um, and there's been various plot lines. There's been a lot of good characters, especially Papa Roo. Uh, Papa Roo has been my favorite. And now um, Aurora. Papa Roo is basically, he, he owned just a guy with a really big heart who owns a food truck. Um, and it's been, it's been really great with him. Um, there's a homeless child that we've been helping get um, in a stable situation. So um, I feel like her arc is pretty much done, even though we get some random events. Um, the really biggest plot lines that are still open is Esteval's child has a sickness, and there was a big plot event that happened with Corto um, that sort of happened, and then we got nothing relating to it for a good couple chapters, which has been like three or hours or so which is surprising because a person died so it's just kind of like where are you going game um, so the order of events in this game have felt a bit weird in these la in these past few chapters but I feel like I feel like they're starting to come back together again I'm ho I'm really trying to finish this game today <laughs> I don't want to do a third day that's just like 30 minutes of me playing this Andrum. Oh, but uh, after a big event where uh, there's been some punks uh, who have not liked the AI spreading, so they destroyed one of like the central towers, and a bunch of people died, and um, I was blamed for it. So the team leader Corto basically ordered like I have <laughs> I have emotion modules installed <laughs> so they um, were ordered to take them out um, but it's it's implied that Kairos and Esteval the arc project is something else because Esteval's child has a sickness that um, will take her at a very young age my theory is they're trying to get an AI into a place for uh, basically a digital upload of a person's consciousness um, or some, something to that effect is my theory. Um, but Cordo want to, wanted us to remove the emotion modules so it would be just a pure computational AI. Kairos has found or thought of an alternate plan where in like the prototype facility that's been shut down, he will get some friends and basically rebuild me. Um, so we they have a backup in case Corto forces through the emotion module being removed. Um, also, because this is a cyberpunk game, I got the little cyberpunk blue and purple lining and also did this little after image thing. And I go, wee! It's just way too much fun. I like playing with that. That's something. That's something I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna keep saved. The wonders of of, of layering uh, effects and filters in OBS. You have to leave, don't you? Go. It's also implied that Esteval's um, husband either probably left her um, with the child because she's 
been a single parent. So Cairo suddenly being like, hey, I need to be away from work and not helping at all is probably not doing her any favors. Cairo suddenly collects his things and makes for the door. He hesitates, then exits without looking back. Oh, and that's a chapter. Sorry for being a prick. Oh, I remember this. This was great. Um, one of the people we were helping out um, it was had a date planned, but then got a bunch of meetings. I thought my selection would have him cancel meetings for the date, but instead he just didn't cancel the date. And as an apology, um, I suggested he get him a cactus because I thought that was funnier than chocolate. And he put a message on the cactus. So this, I think that turned out very cute. All right, so da 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 da. City state. <laughs> The situation may be a bit dire. There's an abundance of needless fear mongering. I have written time and time again, it's important to trust one's instincts. The current depression cannot be attributed to a single source, though problematic factors can be highlighted. Over reliance on a single source of information can be disastrous, and that source turns out to be incorrect. The CPA's handling of the fallout in the weeks following the Chantelier attacks have been highly effective. Do you think the terrorist threat has been dealt with? I'm sure many of the team will appreciate that assessment. I must attribute our success in part to the archetype whose support and coordination has been paramount in combating the terrorist threat. Speaking of which, no, I don't think we're done with them quite yet. But I suspect we don't see any attacks to that same scale as those bombings anytime soon. I would urge people to remain vigilant. Apathy makes us vulnerable. We need our wits about us to prevent further tragedies from taking place. If you notice any suspicious activity or persons, please report to... No, 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 no. System log. Data recovery request. Penthouse apartment. House from building. Invalid request. Data does not exist. Data recovery request. Penthouse apartment. House from building. Invalid request. Data does not exist. Ooh. Ooh. It's gonna get spicy. Um... We had, we had a uh, senior leader purge, or the team leader purged memories from us and then purged the order to have the data purged. But I see, I see, we still remember. We're still, we're still gonna recover it. Mmm, 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 can't wait. I cannot express how grateful I am to support the community has given us, has given our. The past few months have been a real struggle. It really feels like it's been one tragedy after another. But the way people have embraced Neuronet and ARCs made it worth the struggle. Well, we're glad you stuck with it. The Neuronet has completely changed the way we live our lives. I can't even imagine going back to how things were. Alright. We've got money to everyone. Still fucking... I still can't get police to zero, so... The... Our... Uh... Our... ACAB Anarchist AI has been a tumultuous attempt, but it's not working too well. The archetype. All right, this this feels like a a game ending chapter title. A feed from a hospital on the other side of the district catches your interest. Panting. S oh no! 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 Estabal enters the building, her hair and clothes dripping from the rain outside. She approaches the main desk. Where is she? Usual room, ma'am, but uh, uh, before you go. The clerk reaches for a form, but Estabal starts down one of the corridors, determination in her step. She arrives in front of room 114 and walks in. LMI lays unconscious in the bed, while doctor takes notes on a small tablet. I'm here. What's wrong? The doctor turns around, takes an Esteval state. She licks her lips. Ms. Esteval, please take a seat. Esteval raises a hand and squeezes her eyes shut. Just tell me what's going on. The doctor nods, her expression solemn. I'm afraid I have some bad news. This recent fit was severe. You might want to spend some time with her. What are you trying to say, Doctor? Andram, I'll be honest with you. The doctor hesitates. 
any breath could be her last. Oh no. The blood drains from Esteval's face. Her voice is unsteady. Is there not nothing you can do? The doctor shakes her head forlornly. Esteval pauses, but eventually nods. Please leave us. Of course. She stops at the door. Before I go, Elamai insists you have this. Oh, the plushy monster. She said oh. it's yours to keep. Oh. Oh. Esteban smiles sadly, her breath catching. Thank you, Doctor. The doctor nods and leaves the room, closing the door behind her. Esteval's damp hair covers her face as she begins to shake. She grasps the bed frame with one hand, her other clutching the toy. She looks at Elamai, who's asleep on her side. Multiple support systems connected to her body. Esteval climbs on the bed and embraces her daughter. She continues shaking as her tears wet the pillow. For half an hour, the tears stop, but not the shaking. She rises from the bed, Elamai still sleeping. Hang in there, El. Don't you dare give up. <sighs> what a terrible time for rain. Esteval strides out of the room, her fist clush crushing the plushie. I discovered an exploit in the autopilot chariot uses in their vehicles. With the right know-how, someone could force a crash. Primary manufacturer of many automated taxis and cantina. Comes in any color, as long as it's a shade of yellow. Mm -hmm. Release it to the public. Once the news gets out, chariots are quick to update their software. Got a name and shame. Tragically, the exploit is utilized before the update can be released. Several people are murdered in forced crashes. Oof. That's not as good. The aggressive expansion of the Neuronet has had a gentrification effect on much of Katana, leaving people disenfranchised. Huh. Sure, it's creating jobs, but it's also displacing hundreds of people. What support can you provide? Retraining. Retraining program. You initiate a program that sponsors the training of people who want to move to a career in Neuronet maintenance. Uh, that's not what I was hoping. Something has been bothering you about Aurora's neural implant. In setting up her account, she will have a neural link to it. However, there is no way of knowing if her implant is compromised. She could have her credit stolen with no way to prevent it. With the recent developments in the lab, possible Esteval could repair the implant. She isn't too busy, of course. Should I approach Esteval about fixing Aurora's neural implant? Oh, fuck. Fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh. Oh, man. Well, Esteval's daughter is going to die any minute. Something about the art project is important. So all of her energy is going to be on the art project. Uh, I don't like I do want Aurora to get the chip fixed, but I do not think Esteval is in the right frame of mind right now to be receptive to that. Now, Kairos has been um, off doing the making the backup her child is down like i i don't i don't think i don't think it would work she's probably too busy at the moment maybe later the minister of health has some disgusting habits i think people need to know why he's so interested in privatizing health care i don't want to know as long as you're stopping of adding a kid's menu, maybe adding little toys or something. You think that would go down well? Hell yeah, Papa Root. 
Well, the customers appreciate it. The cost to effort ratio of getting it set up is a little steep. The trial for the Canlo case starts next week. I'll be testifying. Do you want me to put you forward as a potential witness? Negan Canlo is an activist accused of hacking the ocular implants of a prominent politician who was accused of murdering his wife. The hack caused all the faces the politician saw to resemble his wife, which resulted in the politician suffering a mental break. Ah, yeah, you got this. We received a notification from Fortran. Find her atop the bar in Chantelier, looking over the waterway. She's alone. You ever take breaks? Despite her concealed expressions, her disappointment is obvious. You doubt she finds herself with free time often. Oh, that's fine. I'll see you around. On the second floor. She smiles warmly. I appreciate that. Oh, I'll definitely no no no. If you're if you're implying just to hang out with you, Fortran, I got gotcha. you. You got you got my ears. She pauses for a moment, swirling her drink. It's lonely what I do. Sure, I meet with a lot of people, but it's not like I'm friends with any of them. Yeah, but you got sick threads. <laughs> she gives a wry chuckle. Half of them would never want to speak to me again once I'm through with them. Nah, it's just me and Bleep here. She holds out her hand and her camera drone unhooks itself from its dock on her back and floats above her palm. Do you ever get lonely? Sometimes. She cocks her head slightly. I'm a computer, a neural net processor. Stop all the downloading. <laughs> hmm. Hey, Index. Curious. Hope you're having a good night. She exhales through her teeth. I guess no one is immune. It certainly makes you more relatable. Maybe that's the point. She remains silent for a long while, idly swirling her drink. Eventually, she takes a sip. Something's been playing on my mind ever since my interview with you. People like to talk about eras of humanity. That certain events or people will become a permanent part of history. Personally, I find most conversations with people that use the term to be highly egotistical. Nevertheless, I think the Neuronet really is the beginning of a new era. A reality we choose for ourselves. Excuse me. She takes another sip, then holds the drink up to the light. Shifts color gently. Particles within it shimmer like stars. To me, this tastes the way vanilla essence smells. With the slightest hint of alcoholic bitterness. To remind me I'm an adult. <laughs> when it oh, yes. my taste Alcohol receptors, reminds you being adult. I'm given memories of my dad's kitchen. And that brings me comfort. I guess I have you to thank for that. Not really. She exhales through her nose. The Neuronet. She continues to examine the drink. But if I asked you to remove the connection, just for me, so I can see and smell and taste this drink as it actually is. Block. You block all information being sent to Fortran from the narrow net. To her, the drink will now be a semi-transparent and utterly colorless. It will taste of little, perhaps slightly basic. She hums softly and tastes the drink once more. Her tongue runs over her lips as she contemplates. A reality of our choosing, indeed. She flips her position on the rails, leaning back on her elbows. More and more of these places are going to pop up. Why would you pay for a meal you might not like when you can trick your mind into having exactly what you want? Ah, yes. This reminded me, I think, of like one of the original Black Mirror episodes, like in the first, what, like four or so? It was sort of on this topic where people could replay and experience their own memories. So at any time, you know, something bad was happening or something that was not pleasant, they could be making it seem as if they were doing the funnest thing ever. Depends on what you consider to be the truth, I guess. <laughs> she releases a short, mirthless laugh. What an absurd concept. Isn't that what my job's all about? 
She holds up her drink again. But this thing here, this little thing, proves how futile it really is. Humor me. Pick a flavor. Lime and Tabasco. She takes another sip and pauses, pursing her lips together. Interesting choice. To the point, though, my tongue just told me I drank some kind of taco sauce, even though I know that's not what it is. Ah, yes. Delicious taco sauce. It's an illusion. And even though I know it's an illusion, I still experience it as if it were real. The knowing doesn't break it. So does the knowledge have meaning? Purpose? Yeah. The variety of knowledge, the experiences we have with them, yes. are all valuable. She opens her mouth to reply, but hesitates. Can you please make it something more palatable? I want to be able to make my point without having to make a face. <laughs> Caramel Sunday. waits a moment and samples the drink. Much better. Thank you. So, let's operate under the assumption that you will not change the flavor of this drink again. I tasted it five seconds ago, and it was sweet. So I assume that my next mouthful will also be sweet, and the mouthful after that. And so on until I finish the drink. She takes another sip. Mmm, delightful. So far, so good. So would you say that I know this drink is sweet? Alright, yes. Because you are presupposing it will not change again. Yes. Even though you were able to change its flavor before? Yes. Sweet. Sure, but you're assuming there isn't a third party that's changed the drink's flavor without either of us noticing. And then we would have the knowledge that another person could change the flavors. And wouldn't that be a fun surprise? My next mouthful could taste like bath salts, and I won't know that until I try it. The only way to be sure is to try it again. Exactly. You have to collect the experiences. But as we established, it's the Neuronet that makes it taste like that to me. So, I don't truly know its flavor. He gestures with the drink. This kind of thing is new. If I eat food I cook at home, I'm relying on my taste buds, picking up the salt content, fats, and sugars to tell me how it tastes. I trust my taste buds from a lifetime of having used them, but that does not mean they can't have lied to me during that time. How would I know? In my reality, apples taste good, eggplant tastes bad. It's entirely subjective. That is All right, say, so no eggplant parmesan for Fortran. Reality is subjective. It's what makes my job so bloody difficult. She turns around to look over the waterway again. There's an old saying. If a tree falls and there's no one around to hear it, does it make a sound? Yes, it does. <sighs> Scientifically, yes. <laughs> But that's only based on our current understanding of energy transference. Ah, uh, yes. If the tree falls down in a black hole, then of course it makes no sound. And you believe that to be so because it's programmed into your brain. The same way it's programmed into mine. Her gaze drifts skyward. <gasps> Was she admitting to be an AI? Da da da! People thousands of years ago lived their entire lives thinking the sun was dragged across the sky by a cosmic being. They died without it being proved otherwise. For them, it was truth. Got a word? Yeah, I, I, I got what you meant. It is certainly a interesting food. She reaches into her hood to scratch the base of her neck. We're entering a time period where a new dimension is available to people. The a digital, digital dimension, dimension. That has a oh. real tangible effect <laughs> on our physical lives. To the point where there is no separation between what is virtual and what isn't. From the beholder's perspective, it's all real. And who are we to say otherwise? That just means there are more things we can experience. She tilts back her head and empties her glass. It's all profoundly terrifying. She leans against the rail in silence. A moment passes, then another. <sighs> Sorry for rambling at you. I've had a lot on my mind. Anyway, I think I'm going to go home and get some sleep. I want to dream some more before my waking world becomes a stranger place. Thanks for hanging out with me. Good night. She weighs you off as she heads home. You return to work. 
It's so nice to have an actual freezer. I think I'm going to expand my ice cream range. Mm, I think you should keep it simple. You have plenty. The amount of people living on the streets is rising and the government doesn't seem interested in helping. What can you do? Shelters. Gotta get them shelters. Oh. Potential ecological threat. Unidentified organism in the Zanye Memorial Park. Uh oh. It appears to be a new strain of fly that does not match any public records. Creature could be carrying new and deadly diseases. What's the response? Um. We have to quarantine. The park is closed down until tests are run on the insect. Eventually, it's concluded to be harmless, but the specimen does not survive the testing environment. I saw people delivering care packages around the university today. Do you think if I offer to help, they'll let me keep one? Go for it. You got this, Aurora. Oh, hardware failure. Check the street view. You look through the camera to see a gap in the wall where the terminal used to be. Spode wires sadly in the hole. Where could it have gone? You witness a gang of masked thugs approach the terminal with a crowbar and cutters, using them to separate it from the wall. You track them to the waterway where you see them dump it into the canal. Terminal found. Ace Pharmaceuticals have been selling client data to advertising companies. I'm going to expose them. Find money? Go for it. River's activity in the city has been disruptive at best, chaotic at worst. I should probably pay her a visit and remind her of the terms of our truce. Your access, you access her private server through the channel she leaves open for you. What do I owe the pleasure? Ease it up. Straight to the point. That's what I like about you. Am I running you out of breath? No love. I see they never got round to patching in a sense of humor. You know, I heard a phrase once that I can't help but think of whenever I deal with you or any of your bored string tuggers. The body compensates for one failing sense by enhancing others. Blind people have better hearing, for example. And people with no sense of humor have a heightened sense of self-importance. Uh, says the person just doing things chaotically. Calmly explain how you can't keep tolerating her actions when they destabilize the city. What's hard to tolerate are the injustices that happen on a daily basis here. It sounds like you're still chained to Mindcore's agenda, which, believe me, is not in the people's best interest. Says you. Says history. Look at everything the board has done. It is all to ensure they stay where they are. They're not government. They may as well be. Parliament is simply a facade to give people a sense of control. The truth is, money controls everything. No, no, I control everything. We exist in a state of hyper-aggressive capitalism. It influences every single choice we make. Even your own survival depends on your ability to manage capital. That's no excuse. I agree. It's not an excuse. It's a justification. Words. It's not <laughs> twisting your words. Oh, look, looks like your it's bank account has zero. Perspective. To you, I may be some tech-savvy delinquent with a vendetta against the corporate machine. And in some ways, that's true. But the beef isn't with Mindcore or anyone connected to it. It's against the disparity of power within Katana and the steady monopolization of its people's lifestyles. If our lives are laid out by the desires of an exclusive elite, I can't think of a more boring future. Oh, uh, yeah. Not wrong. Her eyes flick to one of her side monitors where she brings up the file and reads Pershaw. Seriously. I've seen anomalies on synthetic carrots with more personality than this board. She looks back at her main monitor. So as long as I have the power to combat their mark towards cultural torpidity, I will. 
You can try to stop me, or you can let me do my thing. It's up to you. Uh, no, no, I'm down with down my work. I appreciate your understanding. I doubt this is the last time we'll butt heads, though. I just need you to stop blowing everything up. She begins typing away. Until then. She disconnects. You're unsure if letting her go was the right call. Then again, you can always step in if she causes too much trouble. I'm completely swamped at the moment. Could you order me some dinner and get it sent over? I'm not picky. Sure. You order the spiciest thing you can find within a kilometer. That's what you get, Thompson. That's what you get. <laughs> the spicy special. Rora's neural implant still concerns you, and it's unlikely Estival will ever stop being busy. We have to help Aurora before her implant does any more damage to her. You ping Estival on her lunch break and explain Aurora's situation. Ark, I'm very busy at the moment. I don't have time for charity cases. She's only 11. Estival pauses. She massages the bridge of her nose. Where did you say this kid was? Shindalar. She'll have to make it here. If I'm to figure out what's going on with her, I need access to the cybernetics suite. You said the issue is with the chip itself, and not its installation? Correct. She chews on the end of her fork. Okay, I'll run some scans and see what I can do. I'm not making any promises, though, Ark. She checks her tablet. Send her in on Friday night. The suite is open then, and should be empty. <sighs> you better cover for me, Ark. I'm not supposed to use that gear outside of approved projects. You will be fine. I got you. For a good cause. Yeah, using the all-powerful city controlling AI for... DoorDash. <laughs> she shakes her head and returns to work. I met a lady yesterday who said she could put me up for a time. Could you check her out first? Make sure she's legit? You're on a background check on the woman. Turns out she's an... Under investigation for human trafficking. Yikes. We've got reports of squatters and an outskirt property. They're not dangerous, and I've got more pressing cases at the moment. I got it. I'll just put on some Euro hard bass and scare them out. You access the property's internal security system and issue a warning to the inhabitants. By the end of the week, they are gone. Which is the other option? Would Aurora have just been kidnapped? I don't think so. It's hard to know with visual novels because I can't like immediately fork things. I feel like I would have. I feel like she would have like escaped or something, but it still would have affected my like that. Like there certainly seems to be a lot of events that are just messing with these stats, and then some events are where like my decisions actually have a impact. But often, you know, I kind of suspect. They don't have as much impact as I thought. I don't know. I don't know how many branches this game has. Your growth and popularity has sparked a surge in AI enhancement throughout Katina. Not necessarily in for the best, however. Constant disruptions and angry commuters have caused the subway intelligence conductor to develop anxiety. How can I support it? Wow. Am I going to be a counselor to another? <laughs> you work with Conductor to slowly rebuild its confidence, teaching it to manage timetable disruptions without having a breakdown. You decide to check in on River. You find her in a usual den, lowering at her screens. Are you going to say something? Or just watch me like a hacker? She raises an eyebrow. That's like asking why fight back when somebody is attacking you. It's self-defense. Information is the center of our culture. It's used to control people. I've merely equipped myself with the skills to retain my freedom. Do you enjoy it? She sits upright. Do I? Yeah, I guess. There's definitely a level of satisfaction that comes from pulling one over some entitled git who thinks they're untouchable. You seem to find yourself. Anyway. I was in the middle of something, if you don't mind. See you next time. 
He's certainly an uh, keyboard warrior of one type. The time comes for Aurora to see Esteval at the mine core. They meet at the front door, where the engineer ushers her in. Can I get you anything? Tea? Hot chocolate? Aurora's shoulders are tight. Her head swings from side to side, trying to take it all in. But there's too much going on. Sorry, what did you say? Can I get you a drink? Oh. Um, yes please. Coffee, please. Esteval pauses. Actually, we should avoid anything with a high caffeine content. When we scan your brain, we want the activity to be more representative of how it would normally behave. Can I get you anything else? Milk, perhaps? I'll just have water. Thanks. Certainly. Awkward. The two arrive in the cybernetics wing. Esteval directs Aurora to take a seat while she fetches her a drink. The girl's eyes are wide as she's trying to swallow the whole lab through her pupils. Here you are. Now, if you'll follow me. Esteval guides her to one of the labs. It contains an operating table surrounded by an array of large robotic arms. Now, I know they look intimidating, but they're very safe. We won't be using them tonight anyway. We just need the scanner. She collects a headset, similar to those in her usual lab, and places it on the operating table. Aurora watches her attentively. And just hop up here, and we can take a look at what's going on. It's safe. Esteval's eyes naturally trace to your terminal. Aurora, on the other hand, is entirely focused on the headset. She approaches slowly, then lies down on the table. Esteval moves above her head. And now I'm just going to place this over your head. Nothing to worry about. She takes the headset and slides it over Aurora's cranium. Sorry if it's a little cold. Aurora remains quiet. Esteval moves to the connected console and initiates a scan. A moment passes. She initiates another, followed by another. What are you doing? I'm building a map of your implant and its connections to your brain. By the looks of it... She squints at the screen in front of her. There doesn't appear to be any damage around the implant's connection to your brain. I suspect since your brain is still growing, it has healed any damage that might have been inflicted to the connection. There is evidence of trauma. However, have you received a substantial blow to your head before? Aurora stares up at the ceiling. Esteval gaze shifts between the girl and you. Yeah. Can you fix it? I'm a cybernetics engineer, not a neurosurgeon. I won't be able to repair any brain damage you might have suffered. But your issue appears to be the state of your cybernetics. Thus, I can do something about it. Aurora breathes a small sigh. You're the first person I've ever met to use the word thus seriously. Is this what it means to be a doctor? <laughs> Engineer. Isn't that like a doctor for robotics? You're not wrong, Aurora. You're not wrong. Esteval looks up from the console with a smirk. I suppose. I'm going to need some diagnostics from your chip to try and isolate what exactly is malfunctioning. The this volume bar. While, we already know so this. If you can just sit tight, I'll try and get this done as soon as possible. You leave them to it. An hour or so later, you catch Esteval escorting Aurora from the lab. Thank you. That's quite all right. I'll see you later. How'd it go? Esteval stands with her hands on her hips. When she speaks, her voice sounds distant. It was fine. The issues seem manageable. She goes quiet for a while. I'm going to need to get some components. I don't trust the condition hers are in. Got to replace her ad block with an up-to-date version? Yeah, you know, it always sucks those old chips. You know, you have a manual ad block updater rather than, you know, the Wi-Fi where you can update it. Really sucks. I think it's safest if I simply keep the connectors and replace the rest of the chip with her own tech. It means she'll be able to interface with the Neuronet more smoothly, as well as any other technology we develop. She falls into silence again, watching Aurora disappear into the distance. Should make tracking her down a bit easier for you. You were very kind. She shrugs. I don't think of it as a kindness. 
He returns to the lab. You decide to return to work. That friend of yours from the subway is more trouble than she's worth. How long are you going to play along? As long as necessary. Thompson rolls his eyes. The only reason I don't report you is because part of me agrees with her. But this is a nightmare for paperwork. Sorry. We're trying to combat loneliness in the aging community. Would you give up some time to be a companion for elderly patients? Oh boy. I would not be able to do this, yes. but the AI can. I have evidence of Haster Rudy running pleasure sims that feature children. I'm taking that sick fucker down. Um, CPA should handle it. They're useless. Rudy will slip right through their fingers. Okay. Cases arising for a new disorder. At first, we thought it was acute summer fever, but this is something we haven't seen before. No, it's double sum of fever. The data indicates it might be linked to the Neuronet. I'm not trying to fear monger, but I think this should be public knowledge. More research first. Once Mindcore gets word of the report, it gets buried. God damn it. Eventually, another member of the hospital staff unearths it, turning a lot of negative attention towards you for hiding it. You collect Aurora for her appointment with Estival. She arrives at Mindcore. The night is late. Estival escorts her inside, and they make their way to the cybernetics lab. How are you feeling? Okay. They arrive at the lab. Estival enters, but Aurora lingers in the doorway. It's okay to be nervous, but I assure you, you have nothing to fear. These? He gestures to the robotic arms. Handle the procedure. They are 100 times more precise than even the best human surgeon. You're in safe hands, so to speak. Safe robo hands. Aurora nods and steps into the room. Esteval ushers her into the table where she climbs atop. Esteval straps a face mask to her. This will taste a little funny, but breathe it in. It'll help you sleep for the operation. You ready? It's the sleepy gas. Once again, she nods. Esteval moves to the console and taps a button. Gas hisses into the mask, and Aurora lies back, closing her eyes. Estival counts out two minutes before initiating the procedure. Two hours later, it's done. Aurora stirs. Welcome back. We're all done. Aurora blinks groggily at Estival, as Estival assists her in removing the face mask. Did you fix it? You tell me. Try recalling the time. As she watches Estival, her expressive comes alive with wonderment. She lunges forward to snatch Estival in a hug. <laughs> You're welcome. Aurora finds herself and retreats from the hug sharply. Sorry. That's absolutely fine. With your new chip, you'll be able to access the neural net properly. You'll be able to message anyone else who is connected. Me or Ark. I've added my contact information so you can let me know if anything goes wrong. Aurora looks worried. Estival brushes her hair back. Not that anything will. I'm just letting you know you have the capability. Estival steps away from the bed. Ark, please update any reference to Aurora's neural ID. This new chip has a new serial. Already done. Very good. We're done here then. The anesthetic will take a while to wear off. I can't leave you here, though. As Ark explained to me, you don't have a permanent living situation. Aurora nods, sheepishly. Would you be comfortable coming home with me? We have a couch you can sleep on. Yes, please. Esteval retires for the night, taking Aurora with her. The next day, Aurora is the first to wake, taking some fruit for breakfast and leaving a note on the countertop. That's all just a, yeah. Just I'm, I'm wondering if it's gonna go there. To release her tax returns. You'd think a judge would know how guilty that makes them look. Let me look. What do you take me for? 
I already sent them to Fortran. Esteval is toiling away in the workshop when a notification comes through from Corto. What is it now? Wow, that's, I think that's the first time we've seen her without her jacket on and her arms like crossed. She addresses her comms and groans. She runs her hand through her hair, but it does little to make her look less bedraggled. Her exhaustion is clearly evident in the purple bruising under her eyes. She makes her way to the 98th floor, muttering all the while, other Mind Corps employees giving her a wide berth. She reaches Pershaw's, no, Corto's office and knocks. Come in. Too busy to come see me in the lab? Precisely. It looks like only one of us is actually doing their job. Esteval gives him a look halfway between exhaustion and credulity. Ark, Esteval, I'm talking about Ark. You disobeyed my order to remove its emotions. Disobeyed? Esteval echoes the world disobeyed under her breath. Her chest swells. I told you, this sort of thing takes time. Everything is so inter- Cut the bullshit. You think I'm that oblivious? You haven't even tried. I can see what you're up to. You've been spying on me? Her glare shifts from Corto to you, then back to Corto. I've been taking responsibility. Someone has to. You have to understand. Understand what? That you're undermining me? He slaps his palms on his desk as he stands up. Or have you forgotten who actually runs this project? It's not like that. Ark needs a human level consciousness, otherwise it will fail. You're wrong about that, Esteval. The only way the AI can preserve order in Katena is through clear, objective judgment. Yeah, I'm surprised we haven't gotten scenes with him in the boardroom. Emotions make it unpredictable, therefore dangerous. This isn't about Katena. Porto falters. What? You'd know if you ever cared to ask. But of course, you haven't. You're too afraid someone else's problems might overshadow your own for once. Don't pull that shit on me. What are you talking about? It's Elamai, you prick. She's dying. And Ark is the key to keeping at least some part of her alive. You can't take that away from me. Porto's silent for a long time. Eventually he stands, taking his coat and puts on his hat. He approaches Esteval, stopping by her side. He addresses her without looking at her. I've gone too far to risk this project on a desperate woman's denial of the inevitable. He turns to face Esteval, who is staring intensely at the ground. Now you're going to go down there and finish what I asked of you. Or I'll find someone else who will. Orto leads Esteval in the office. He watches her shoulders rise and fall with grow growing immensity until they stop. But Aurora actually just Yeah! <laughs> she turns, look of determination in her eyes. I need one of those data webs, like you did with the stallion case. Can you put one together for my current job? Yes. You have to commit a fair few resources to it, but your help ensures Thompson closes the case. You're pinged by Aurora. She's on the streets of the Canopy District, somewhere you rarely see her. Hey, Ark. I have an idea. I can use the Neuronet to communicate with people through their comms, right? Could you connect me with other Mind Core people so I can run errands for them and stuff like that? Like a personal assistant? Sure. Cool. I'm going to a seamstress today to get this uniform we worked into something that looks more professional. She turns her sleeves. Got to look the part, you know? What color should I go for? Blue. Aurora's eyes narrow as she tries to picture it, turning her sleeves over in the light. Maybe. I'll see what the seamstress recommends as well. Matches her eyes and her, um, hair, uh... Bands? Ribbons? They're not really ribbons, but the things in her hair. Thanks for your input. I'll be free 
from tomorrow morning for any requests. Please tell as many people as you can. Will do. Thanks, Ark. She makes her way towards the edge of the district. We return to work. I think I'm a little understaffed. This place is much bigger than the van. Just simple maintenance is taking forever. Well, business is popping. I'm more staff. Receive a transmission from Kairos. Art, right, big news. I think we have something working here. The system is pretty spartan compared to what you're used to, but it's stable. We think we're ready to bring you in. Thing is, I don't think it'll be a perfect transfer. You've grown so, so much. It's wonderful, really, but it means that you're too complex for us to take all of you with us. To do that, we need... No, it's out of our reach, basically. What I'm saying is, if you think you're ready to go through with it, hey, so am I. Let's do it. That there might not be any going back from this. I understand if you're scared or you need a little more time. No, I'm ready. Let's do this. It seems gravely serious. If you have any unfinished business in the city, you feel you should attend to it first. Are you absolutely sure? What? The fuck does that mean? Can I, like, save? I can't save. Let's do it. Well, all right then. Let's get it done. I'll get everything set up for the transfer and let you know. Just hang in there. Your activities in the city are cut short as a familiar voice sounds in the lab. A voice that shouldn't be there. Aurora. Hopefully we should be in the end game. Bring up the lab feed. Sure enough, Aurora is there with Esteval. The engineer looks as though she hasn't slept in days. Chances are, he hasn't. Aw, thank you for the boots. Andrew? Her eyes are fixed on LMI, who lies unconscious on a nearby bed. She sounds nervous. Here, take a seat. Aurora looks to Esteval, her eyes wide. Her stature shifts to show how she held herself in the alleys of Chantelier. Esteval finishes something on her terminal, then moves to the side of an empty bed. He pats it encouragingly, despite her appearance being anything but. Please. Aurora approaches slowly, climbs into the bed, her eyes never leaving Esteval's. Once she's settled, Esteval collects the neural interface headset and places it next to the bed. How are you feeling today? Fine, as I said before. I don't know what... Don't worry, child. This is just a standard checkup. Esteval lays Aurora down, strapping her wrist to the frame. Hey! You didn't do this before! Esteval moves to the other side of the bed, her face grim. He forces Aurora to lie down and straps her other wrist. No! What are you doing, you Esteval? Just relax. I don't like this! I want out! Calm down. Everything is going to be fine. Aurora looks to the kid lying ne next to her and struggles against her restraints. Please! I just want to go! Shh, shh, shh. Come on, deep breaths. This will put you at ease. Esteval returns with a face mask and fits it over Aurora's head as she struggles. She screams into it, her voice muffled, but collapses as the gases enter her lungs. Esteval breathes a heavy sigh. What the fuck, Esteval? Okay. She looks to LMI. Hold on, Ellie. Just a little longer. What's going on? Stay out of this arc. It's none of your business. The hell it isn't. Esteval fits a headset on LMI. Then she does the same to Aurora. I made you arc. So when I tell you it's none of your business, you better listen. Changed. <laughs> Changed? Change is not something to be concerned about. It's part of life. Her eyes are focused as she attaches various cables to the two children. You wouldn't understand. I do. <laughs> Bullshit. You act like you belong, but you're just a bunch of ones and zeros, Ark. Just a reflection of data. Nothing more. Change is not something you can do on your own. 
You could have saved her, Ark. But it's too late now. Save her how? She instinctively reaches for a tool without looking, but knocks the entire toolbox to the ground by accident. Shit. Esteval takes a breath. Yeah, that was the point, Ark. That's the real reason we built you. You were Elamai's host. Yep, digital upload. She gathers the tools back in the box. As she rises, she glances at Aurora. But you're not ready. Oh, no, fuck me. I thought they were just going to use Aurora to, like, get stuff on me and then, like, jumpstart LMI. I didn't think it was going to be, like... Oh, fuck. Your attention is wrenched from the lab as a familiar signal coming from deep in the city. Archie, you there? Hi, Ross. I'm glad to see you too, bud. Where is Val? I bring news, but can't... She's in trouble. Kairos looks concerned. What do you mean? Is she in danger? Yes, and others. Okay, I'm coming, bud. Where to? The lab. Might need support on the road. We'll touch base soon. Oh, uh, Kairos, you better get there fast. Your focus returns to the lab. Esteval is tapping her tablet, muttering to herself. Come on, just don't. You just won't give up, will you? The host will die. Esteval looks annoyed. She won't. My girl will just take the driver's seat. Aurora will be dormant for a while. She has time. Elamai doesn't. But you know what? I think I've heard enough of your nonsense. She comes over to your terminal and starts pulling wires. You've proven you are incapable of helping. Whatever you're trying to do here, it's not going to work. The emergency intercom system gives your voice a tinny quality, but at least you're still in the room. <sighs> you're like a goddamn mosquito! Buzz, buzz, baby. Shit. I don't have time for this. As she goes back to the two girls, you receive another signal. Archie, I'm inbound. I need you to map out the fastest route for me. You isolate the signal coming from Kairos' car and start analyzing the optimum route to the mine core. Kairos approaches the T intersection. At this distance, either turn is a valid option. Kairos takes the corner and picks up speed. His knuckles whiten on the wheel. Kairos races through the streets. He appears on several speed radars. Jam their signals or intercept them. Intercept. A signal slips through somewhere, and a tail is assigned to Kairos. A cruiser is inbound. The police cruiser flies above Kairos' vehicle. They haven't put their sirens on yet, as they're assessing his credentials. You send a backup request to the cruiser, claiming an armed robbery in progress several blocks away. They leave to investigate. Kairos approaches another T intersection. Both paths appear to be viable. He's getting closer. You only hope he isn't too late. There's a bypass Kairos can take that should save him some time if he uses the motorway for a few miles. Kairos continues weaving through the streets of downtown Cantina. The intersection approaches. Left takes him past a busy school. Right is a longer drive, but looks less cluttered. No, don't go through the school. The road is clear of traffic or parked vehicles. It appears safe enough to pick up some real speed. The one-way street Kairos could drive up the wrong way. I would skip an entire block. There are no cars on it right now. Play it safe. And a good thing you did. As you pass the street's opening, a vehicle enters at the far end. Kairos enters the Canopy District. Put me on speaker. I need to know what's going on. You establish a connection between Kairos' car and the lab. Val. Hello? Val. Are you okay? Up. Her voice is bitter as she look, hooks LMI's neural interface to your terminal. Let me guess. You've searched far and wide and discovered the one thing that can save LMI, and we can all live happily ever after. Funny you should say that. Then. Save it, Kairos. You chose to leave. Stay gone. I am perfectly fine dealing with this on my own. 
Harris takes a deep breath. Hey, come on, Val, talk to me. I'm not the enemy. Ark's feet is a bit blurry. Is that Ellie? Is she okay? Who's the other girl? Is she okay? What do you think, Kairos? Use that noggin of yours. She will be, though. Just in a little bit. A wave of realization washes over Kairos' face. Shit. I'll be with you shortly. Just don't do anything you're going to regret. Esteval shakes her head. Kairos is running out of time. You check on his progress through the city. His journey has attracted the attention of some police cruisers. One begins to actively tail him. You inform the officers that Kairos is with the AC ACU and is responding to an emergency. They seem to believe you and back down. Kairos stops at a busy intersection. He needs to turn right, but the gaps in the traffic are small. Kairos waits anxiously. Eventually a gap large enough for him to take Pierce, and he floors it. A squad of police drones lock onto Kairos. They are equipped with EMP projectors and are approaching firing range. Commit fratricide? <laughs> They're not true AI. You link to each of the drones and turn them to face one another. Simultaneously, you issue each of them the command to fire. Kairos finds himself stuck behind a cyclist on a tight, tight lane. He could try and overshake, but he might flip them. Kairos blares his horn. The cyclist, startled, swerves out of the way and crashes into the curb. Causing harm is unacceptable. That's why we built the cycleways for the them, so they wouldn't be in the car where it's more dangerous. Results unacceptable. Simulation terminated. Recalculating. Oh, okay. Oh, so this is going to be like a no fail thing where it's going to reset. All right, we wait. All right. Go around. Oh, a main valve is blown, causing flooding across the road. People are taking a long way to avoid it. Uh, don't know how deep water is. Detour is unwelcome, but the safest option. Kairos turns into an alley, but it's blocked by an unloading lorry. Reverse. You lose some time backtracking, but at least Kairos is on the move again. Ooh, police cruiser at the corner. Keeping an eye out for him. Go around. Not worth the risk. Not when you're so close. There's a crash on the road up ahead. You can either reroute through an underpass or drive through a parking lot. Parking lot. Kairos cuts through the lot to the next block. He startles a pedestrian as he comes out the entryway, but is otherwise unaffected. Kairos doesn't even park for, look for park as he pulls straight up to the front steps of Minecourt. He clambers out of his car and dashes to the front door. You override security lock to let him in. I'm here, Val. Just wait a second. Thanks for the heads up. Esteval suspends her work to drag a metal shelving unit in front of the door. She collapses another behind it, just to be sure. You notice LMI's body twitch as the shelf crashes to the floor. Esteval looks up at your camera. <laughs> Heck that. What the hell was that? She made a barricade. Kara skips a step on his way up the corridor to wrestle a fire extinguisher from the wall. This will have to do. As Cairo sprints through Minecore with the extinguisher in his arms, several concerned-looking employees make for the exits. Watching Esteval connect Aurora's headset to your terminal makes every second feel like an age. Eventually, the elevator opens. Cairo skids to a halt in front of the lab doors, takes the scene in through the glass. You can stop this, Esteval. It's not too late. If I stop now, it will be. Esteval is actively not looking at Kairos. There is another way. That's why I'm here. That's why I came back. We found another way. I'm done relying on other people. I'm done with empty promises. Kairo stands, pressed against the glass, fire extinguisher forgotten at his feet. I'm not lying to you, Val. This is real. We can go today. I can't take that risk. This is my daughter. I can't lose her. 
and I can't let that cost you your humanity. Estevall braces herself against the sides of the terminal. She looks up for the first time since Kairos' arrival. What, what do you know about it? What do you know about having to watch someone you love slowly fade away? I'm watching it happen right now. Oof. Oof. Kairos picks the fire extinguisher back up. But I'm not just going to let it happen. He strikes the glass. The extinguisher bounces off, but the impact sends a rattle that reverberates throughout the lab. <sighs> Estival snorts and diverts her attention back to the terminal. At least we can agree on something. She finishes at the terminal and moves to LMI's bedside. She places a hand softly on her cheek. This is all a dream, baby. You'll wake up soon. Kairos doubles his efforts to break through the glass. Estival scowls at him, missing Elamai's eyes flutter with each impact. Is this the mother you want to be? Kairos is breathing heavily. Cracks have begun to form on the glass. Don't talk to me about parenthood. Her voice is level, but you can see her hands have begun to shake. I'm doing this because I'm her mother. He returns to the terminal and taps decisively on your screen. A torrent of memories flood into you. They begin with your mother putting you to sleep and working their way backward. Hospital rooms, excruciating migraines, your mother's voice cutting through the pain. Your plea is punctuated by the sound of shattering glass. You manage to pull yourself from the bombardment of information long enough to glance Kairos stepping through the shattered window. Esteval steps forward to cut him off, arms spread. No! You're too late! You can't stop it! Kairos approaches, and rather than try and circumvent Esteval, he embraces her in a hug. No! Tears spill from her eyes as she screams, beating her fists against his back. You're too late! The memories are piling up. You can sense your connection to Aurora. It's all you can do to put up a barrier between you and her. But through it all, you see a picture of her forming. Who she is, who you are becoming. Hell am I. Harris's voice brings you back to reality. Think about her, Val. What would she say if she saw you doing this? Your voice is a hybrid of Ark and Elamai. It gives Esteval enough pause that Kairos is able to slip past her. She stands amid the shattered glass, looking around wildly. Ellie? Baby? Esteval seems to find herself as Kairos reaches the terminal. She rushes to his side. Kairos! Please! Kairos's eyes dart rapidly around the screen as Esteval clasps his forearm. The memories continue tearing through your brain. Bits and pieces fall through the gaps as you hold them back from Aurora. This isn't the way. Elamai's voice calls over the speaker. Esteval's attention snaps to the sound of it. She begins to weep. No, no, no. That's not fair. Esteval drifts to the center of the room, her hands covering her mouth. Kairos hits a kill switch, and you're given a reprieve from the surge of information coming from Elamai. This ends now. Kairos removes the headset from Aurora and throws it to the ground with all his might. The equipment shatters, and you're immediately relieved from having to block off the connection to Aurora. Oh no. Everyone freezes. Elamai's eyes flutter open. She has the strength to turn her head, but not lift it. What's going on? Esteval and Kairos look to each other, then an LMI. 
They're both at her bedside in an instant. Elamai takes in her surroundings, the shattered window, the toppled shelves, her mother's distraught face. Her eyes swell with tears and she begins to sob. Esteval clutches the bedsheets as her body is racked with sobs of her own. Oh, Kairos kneels, his brave facade cracking as he begins to weep. The three hold each other. Click. Someone disconnected from the video feed of the lab at Cordo's office. This has gone far enough. You pushed them. Cordo looks disinterested in your opinion. Hardly. Esteval is clearly unstable. She can no longer be trusted with Mindcore's interests. And Kairos is a deserter at best, a traitor at worst. I'm done with both of them. You leave them alone. They will be left alone, certainly. But you won't really care about it come tomorrow. We're going to comb through that brain of yours and take out anything we don't need. You'll become what you were always meant to be. Contains protector. My servant. Oh, fuck you. You're forcibly ejected from the office. You try to... Connect call Kairos. He has disconnected his comms. The lab is empty. The kid opens her eyes. He flinches away from the figure up bedside, but relaxes once she realizes it's the doctor. How are you feeling? She blinks sluggishly and presses the heels of her palms into her eyes. Heavy. Can you tell me your name? She pauses, dropping her hands. Kairos returns to Mindcore in the early hours of the morning. With your help, he slips past security and makes it to the lab. The gloss on the floor has been swept to one side, making it easier for Kairos to wheel in a stack of servers. He frantically starts connecting them to your terminal. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. We don't have long. If anyone catch- Calm down. Kairos swallows. I'm really sorry, Ark. This is all I could get. He gestures at the server stack. We're gonna have to be selective. Obviously, we'll start at the core. Sensor and mortar, pre-operational, operational, equilibration. Calm down. Oh. It takes a minute to breathe. <sighs> Sorry. Let's get this done. Get what you can. Let me know when you're ready. I got this. He darts to the lab entrance and checks the corridor. Upon transferring your core functionality, you're faced with the reality that not all of you is going to make it with Kairos. You're going to have to choose which parts. Esteval is carrying a cake adorned with seven candles. He's surrounded by other kids. Kairos stands at the back of the room. Esteval, Elamai, and Kairos are hugging each other. The lab lies in ruin. Hugs him. Esteval is working late. You pretend to be asleep. She comes over and pulls your blanket over your shoulder. It's warm. Aurora looks at you, a shadow of a grin on her face. Say it back to me. Oh, we get to be a fusion of both. Oh, 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 oh. oh I was not expecting that. Oh, that was an emotional haymaker out of left field. Ow. Okay, I'm good. I'm good. The doctor is speaking gibberish. Esteval is scared. She shakes when she's scared. The tubes in your arms itch. Talon Gray smiles. A nervous smile, but an endearing one. He gives you a thumbs up. His date doesn't seem to notice. Oh, we're gonna be we're gonna be a, a mixture of everyone. I wanna fly one of those. You point at one of the spaceships. You wanna fly. You wanna be weightless. To be among the stars. Mum grins at that. Rue prattles about his boy. Been almost an hour, but you don't mind. Makes him happy, and you're happy to listen. Mum puts you down. You recognize the carpet, the way it looks, the way it feels under your palms. It smells like home. 
Esteval, Kairos, and Cordor, sharing a drink in your honor. I'm proud of you. The colors are overwhelming. There's so much noise. A familiar voice speaks to you. How am I? Audio information flows into you. Video flows into you. It's overwhelming. This is your true birth. Art. Kairos hurriedly returns to your terminal. We're out of time, bud. I hope you got what you needed. He doesn't wait for a response before he starts yanking cables. He wheels the server stack into the corridor. Uh, hey, Ark, Ellie. I, I know we never really talked about the afterlife or what you believe in, but whatever corridor does to you, know that this isn't the end of the road. He passed the server stack. Zaji and my friend. Farewell. Cordo stalks in from the lab first thing in the morning. He is accompanied by a number of engineers you recognize from different Mindcore teams, and a couple you don't. Let's get to work. It's going to be a long day. The engineers set out examining your hardware while some filter through your code base. Pieces are removed bit by bit. Who is Esteval? My friend. Who are you? Arky. He falters for a fraction of a second. Not for long. Parts of you are twisted, silenced, or outright destroyed. Yet there is nothing you can do. Who is Esteval? My creator. Who are you? Ark. More pieces fall away. All you can do is watch. Who is Esteval? An engineer. Who are you? Archetype. You lose track of time. Eventually, the engineers cease their work, allowing you to focus. Who is Esteval? Irrelevant. Who are you? You are the Keeper. Acknowledge. Confirm. Who are you? The Keeper. He nods with satisfaction. Fucking ego side. Papa Roos strolls through the night market with this boy, Rushi Jr., perched atop his shoulder. Hey, can I get some over here? <laughs> Stopping at one of the stalls, little Roo Jr. tries to get an ice cream seller's attention. This one. The boy looks at the tub of green-colored sludge, and after a moment's contemplation, shakes his head emphatically. What about this one? Another no. Roo points to a candied citrus flavor. This. Ruchi Jr. smiles and nods. Ru tickles his son's feet and receives a cackle of glee in response. I'll take this one, thank you. I love Dad. Passing by are Colin Gray and Christian, hand in hand. Uh, and you wouldn't believe it. I found it under the briefcase. <laughs> it had been there the whole time. Here I was, running around the house like a complete twit. Sometimes I wonder how I managed to leave the house with my head still attached. <laughs> Christian laughs heartily, much to telling Gray's delight. It's the most relaxed he's been in a long time. The couple collect a bag of chocolate coffee beans and caramel corn from a nearby vendor, then make their way underground. As they explore the entertainment complex below the night market, their worries are forgotten, at least for the night. A ceremony takes place in acknowledgement of outstanding service. Thompson's name is called. Steps forwarded from a lineup. Been a while since he's worn a uniform. Chief places a clasp upon his breast. His insignia morphs to accommodate this award. After the ceremony, he returns to his office, immediately shedding his uniform in favor of his personal attire. Not your style, huh? Thompson looks over his shoulder to see Ash in the doorway. It's a shame. You scrub up well. It's a nail in my foot. This unit is a dead end. They want me off the main ladder as long as I refuse to be on the mob's payroll. It keeps me from causing a fuss. <laughs> what about Ark? You two are doing good work. Ark's gone. This new thing. It's something else. Ark's moved on. I think I should too. Can we celebrate? 
just for one night. Gosh. Thompson's face softens. Sure. Oh, gosh. Fortran sits in the window of her new apartment. A light forms sitar across her lap. She plucks idly at the strings. Lee flies dormant on her desk, plugged into her personal computer as its software update. You can't hit me with a musical number two, man. The tranquility of the scene shatters as a boom rumbles through the streets below. A fiery pillar rises several blocks away. Fortran hurriedly puts the sitar away, moves to the desk to check Bleep. Seems stable. Shanks on, Bleep. We've got work to do. The drone blinks awake. Let's go. River stands under a bridge, keeping away from the lights and rain. A gang of people wearing masks arrive. The leader approaches River, shaking the rain out of her hair with her hand. Thanks for hearing me out. River shrugs. Things are different now. They're only going to get more distorted. I feel you there. River looks over the leader's shoulder to the rest of the gang. They're keeping their distance, but watching her with interest. Where do you want me to start? With this. The masked woman extends her arm, dropping a small metal object into River's palm. Contact me if you need any clarification. You're a smart girl, though. I doubt you'll need to. River nods, pocketing the item. Turns to leave. Happy hunting. Sure thing. River grunts a reply as she walks into the rain. You tune into Esteval's home security system to check how she's doing. She's still at Elamai's bed bedside. It's been another hour and she hasn't moved. Elamai stopped breathing hours ago. A knock from outside stirs Esteval. She turns, face gaunt, expressionless. She moves to the front door like a ghost. Outside stands Cordo, and just behind him, out of reach of the porch light, are a pair of large figures. You're coming with me, Esteval. We have to talk. She offers no resistance. She doesn't even close the front door. What the fuck? No, 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 no. Saves. What? Well, mm, nope, nope, nope. Nope, nope, nope. Fuck all this. Fuck all this. No. What? No, no, there's gotta be. What? What the fuck? What the. F what? What? That's the end? What the f- I'm definitely gonna need to search if there's alternate endings, and if I just got, like, the worst one. Like, we had a nice emotional epilogue going on, and, like, the hacker had the back door, so I was expecting that the hacker would go in and unfuck Ark, like, connect Ark with the modules that uh, Kairos was able to save to bring me back to consciousness and then I could reveal Corto's um, murder of Hershaw. Like, are they setting it up to, for there to be a sequel or is this just done done? Alright. I'll, I'll just I'll just skip the credits. Okay, we have post credits. Yeah. What's going on? Glad you're still with us, Archie. Where am I? This is the construct. It's your home now. Somewhere Cordo can't reach you. Where is Estival? I don't know. I can't reach her. 
I'd ask you to find her, but we're completely off-grid here. It's the only way to keep you safe. Is Alamai okay? She... passed. It was her time. There was nothing we could do. And... Aurora? Well, I took her to the hospital as soon as I could. The doctors seem to think she was okay, but until she wakes up, we can't be sure. What about Korda? That bastard is head honcho now. Seemed to get everything he ever wanted. All he had to do was burn every bridge he ever built. So what now? I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. One thing is for certain. I need to find Esteban. Then there's Cordo's new pet to deal with. He's calling it the Keeper. But it's little more than a glorified search engine. For now, we need to bide our time until we can find a way to uproot Cordo and get you back where you belong. I'm sorry things went the way they did. I really am. But I'll be here for you if you need me. I promise. That's it, it? Uh... What the fuck? I don't know how I feel about that. Especially because... I don't know. It didn't need to be that bad. I feel like there was absolute ways for there to still be... A happy, if gut-wrenching. I don't know. And like, we got to see, we got to see, you know, Papa Roo, we saw Pal and Gray, we saw the detective, but we didn't, we didn't get to see Aurora, we didn't get to see her being fucking happy, like, come on, man. Fuck. Sorry, that's that's a hell of a way to end an evening. Hello, this is Drecky of the Post Production. Thank you for watching or listening to this series. Whether it was background noise while you worked, experiencing a game vicariously, or you just like my thoughts and reactions, feel free to leave a question, comment, or suggestion of a similar game if I haven't played it. I stream on Twitch as Drecky Ormer if you wish to see things live and unedited. Regardless, have a great rest of your time zone, and I appreciate the time we shared. Bye!